Hey folks, this is the Rock and Roll King, Robert R. McFarlane, talking to you. And this is episode four about the Rock and Roll CD, how it came to be. And at this point, I almost forgot, i got to mention this one guy. Um, his name is Dave Bush from G Dave Bush Guitar Works. The interesting story, and again, I believe life is about timing. We're on this journey, and it's awesome sometimes how we meet people. And everybody that I've met that's been part of this project uh, with this Rock and Roll CD has been phenomenal and has worked with me so well. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better group of people. I mean, awesome people, awesome at their craft. The guy that I want to mention here in, in uh, episode four is Dave Bush. Um, the funny story was, is I went back, I said, well, I knew Jack could not do my CD. I thought about driving to Tennessee. That's like seven and a half, eight hours away. And um, I just didn't want to take off a couple weeks to work and, and uh, worry about that. Uh, I'm sure we could have got singers and everything down there. Uh, but I wanted to try to keep it kind of close. So I was like, I don't know where to go. The funny story is I actually went back to John Schwab's studio to see if I could get some information where Joe Veers was. And I thought about just recording there, even if I couldn't get John Schwab, because or um, Joe Veers, because John Schwab's studios have recorded some great uh, albums there, out CDs and everything. So I said, well, let me just go back to uh, John Schwab's studios and, and I'll work with someone there. And... Um, I was actually getting ready to hook up with a, a producer there, and I got his name and everything like that, and we started talking about gear, and uh, it was funny because uh, J. Thomas Davis has worked on my guitar since I've been 18, and I'm 45 now, so he's the only one that I've ever really worked on my guitars. I went to a couple people here and there, a little closer drive from me, but I always went back to J. Thomas Davis, and he actually quit doing the repairs on guitars. He's just building custom guitars now, and he's a phenomenal uh, craftsman of uh, acoustic guitars. I think he does mandolins also. So I needed somebody to, you know, set my guitar up, do all the work on that. You need to do that yearly, basically. Uh, anyways, um, the guy at uh, John Schwab Studios gave me this this card. I said, okay, uh, I'll check him out. He said, he's a great guy. His name is Dave Bush. So I went to Dave's and uh, I had my rock and roll machine, I had the Les Paul here. I said, Dave, I'm in the studio right now. Can you give these a fine tune for me so we can be playing at the best of ability. He said, no problem, no problem, we'll get it done. He said, hey, you know, where are you recording at? I said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of leaning towards John Schwab's. I'm still looking around for a couple places. Uh, uh, there's a few other places I want to look around before I actually, you know, sit on. He goes, I got this great um, guy that I know right in Grove City, close to where you live. Um, his name is Joe Pierce. Uh, Sonic Lounge Studio. I said, well, well, ain't that a coincidence? I've been looking for this guy for, uh, you know, almost a year now. Uh, so I finally found him. I said, well, let me give him a call and uh, we'll see what he does. So I told him, I said, I know all about Joe Veers. I've been trying to get him. Nobody tells me where he's at. So, and again, you know, it's just the business world. Understandable. So I hooked up with Dave Bush. He did all the work, all the setups on every instrument that I played on the CD. So he'll get credit on that. Uh, so he made these guitars, uh, banjo, the mandolin, everything sound phenomenal. So hats off to Dave Bush, super killer guy. I mean, he's busy, busy, busy. And, you know, he, if I had a session, he'd make sure, you know, got it done in time for the session every, day, every time he did. So he was a big integral part of this CD. So I hooked up with him. I got to find out where Joe Veers was. So I met with Joe Veers finally. And I told him, Joe, I said, Man, I was going to hook up with you back in the 90s. You know, we had this project going together. And um, they wanted to go with another studio a little cheaper. I told him that's a big mistake. And he said, you don't know how many times I've heard that. People try to get a better deal. But they uh, sometimes get what they pay for. And again, not slighting anybody. But the proof's in a pudding and also in a listing of some of the projects. So I didn't want to release anything if it wasn't 100% of what I could give. And uh, I just knew from his um, recommendation from so many people. And I talked to him one time in the late 90s, and I wanted to work with him. And um, it's just been an honor to finally hook up with him. But uh, we hooked up, uh, I think it was the summer of 2015. And I said, hey, you know, I'm working with Jack. I'll try to get these um, uh, songs back up here. And we'll start probably after the first of the year. 
So I wanted to give Jack enough time to move down there and he was rebuilding the studio and he was working somewhere else too, helping another studio out. So I didn't want to uh, slam him and getting the songs up, but he, you know, I gave him enough time. And um, January 2016, he started sending the songs up that we worked on. And I just wanted to give you a, a shot of this. This is my uh, Cherry Wine Les Paul. And again, this guitar is on just about every track except the acoustic tracks. And it should be in the left channel on the CD uh, unless we, we mix something up. Um, but those are the two, my SG and Les Paul, the main guitars on the CD as far as the rhythm goes. So, hooked up with Dave Bush, finally hooked up with Joe Veers, uh, takes us to January 2016. And again, this started out as a 10 song EP or a 10 song CD, 12 song CD, 16 song. The reason why I went a little bit bigger because I had 16 songs, it just couldn't fit in 80 minutes. It was about 90 minutes long. I said, well, I didn't want to leave one off. Let's just go for a bigger CD. So that's why I went to 21. It's finally at 22. So I hooked up with Joe Veers at Sonic Lounge Studios, and we started getting these songs in from Jack, mixing the drums down, the bass, and the rhythm guitars down of what we had, uh, kind of getting the game plan of what we needed. So that was uh, in January of 2016, probably through February 2016, where we started doing some mixing um, some, some overdubs here and there of guitar work. Um, so that was pretty much up to that point. Um, I don't want to go any further uh, time-wise on this one, but um, we went up to about February 2016. I told him, hey, it's going to be a 22 CD. Uh, he was trying to talk me to do an EP, which everything he said was 100% true. Put an EP out, you know, gain some momentum, a following, some money and then put the big one out but I wanted to do it right I have a vision for the CD it's called rock and roll and um, I wanted I, I didn't want to sacrifice that vision I'd rather spend the money and the time and do it that right way so we had the vision hey let's go for it if this is what you want to do Joe's with me and uh, we really nailed it into it uh, so it was me Joe and Mikey uh, from here on out until to, even to this day Mikey tries to come every session to to try to uh, add uh, his input and help us get a good mix and everything in there. So again, that's episode four. So we've came a long way. Next episode, we'll go a little deeper. But this is the Rock and Roll King, Robert R. McFarland, talking to you. And until next time, keep rocking in the free world. I believe music's the soundtrack of life. Have some every day. Until next time, folks, keep rocking and rolling.